Welcome back to PLOS Politics. A document showing that the embattled Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, plotted with some Muslim leaders to violent, violently wipe away Christians from northern parts of Nigeria. It says that Pantami chaired the July 13, 2010 meeting of the Jamanut Nasri Islam, JNI, where it was agreed that Christians would be stopped from evangelizing. Well, whether or not this is true, we, however, now know the presidency's stand as regards the drama circling the minister. And we ask, what are the potential security implications of the minister holding on to his office? Joining us uh, to discuss this, uh, we have uh, Mr. Tony Foyeton, a security expert. And uh, a lot later, we'll very likely be joined by Kabir Adamu, also a security risk management and intelligence specialist. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Foyeton. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Uh, let's start with, you know, the, the, the minister hasn't denied that this meeting uh, um, held. Um, in fact, most of the conversations that he has uh, put out, he hasn't really denied much. Uh, we have only, you know, seen that, you know, the government has decided to forgive the minister and, of course, chosen that we all move on from all of this. Do you think that this is, you know, even is possible? Is, it, is that a good step to take? to ignore some of the conversations in that uh, meeting on the, uh, in 2010? Uh, well, for those of us that are in the security industry, um, for some of us, it is not something that is new or spectacular, uh, except for the fact that in most cases, when we raise issues like this, um, those of you uh, at the journalistic table who always ask, uh, do you have evidence to that effect and all those stuff? I remember that I've granted several interviews on this platform, and I mentioned the, the phrase, sleeper cell. And I remember I said that sleeper cell exists in almost every strata of government in Nigeria. And uh, there is not, it's not, it, there's nothing spectacular about that assertion. You remember that even the former president did say that Boko Haram were in his government then. Uh, before this, now you now have a new uh, government in place. And if you have, if you studied the body language of them, the present government, you would have seen that over the years we have really asked the question whether the government is truly interested in fighting against terrorism or is just you know a pampering terrorism as it were. Now, sleeper cells are people that are sympathetic to the cause of terrorism and they are in strategic positions. And this is what you see. There is nothing special about Pantami except for the fact that uh, it is uh, just revealed, so to say. There are many Pantamis in the National Assembly, in the House of Rep. There are many Pantamis in government as it is today. And that, that is why you will see that we've not succeeded in prosecuting the war against terrorism the way it ought to be. Uh, ordinarily, for a country that is really enthusiastic about the prosecution of war against terrorism, anybody that is sympathetic or has been sympathetic to the cause of terrorism should not be allowed into government, not to talk of holding strategic position like that that Pantami is holding. So the extent that, look, today we are talking about 4 million Chadians or foreigners having an NIM number. And it's like as if it's inconsequential. We've had several where election will be held, and you hear people coming from the jail or coming from Chad to come and cast ballots in Nigeria election. Now we've had series of such. Now the question will not be, how come that as it is today, we've not been able to prosecute those that have been sympathetic or sponsors of terrorism? It is because people like Pantami are in government. And once they are in government, they will forgive themselves, they will disregard every accusation, they will make, you know, they will demystify everything that has to do with such a uh, fight against terrorism. And that's the way I see it. Uh, so if, 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 if Mr. President, for example, want to really show truly, there is no reason to keep Pantami, not even for one minute. Not even for one minute. It's, it's not in government place to say we are forgiving him for whatever reason. 
So you see, these are information that are coming to public glare are against their wish. And this, what is happening now is more or less like, what do we do to salvage the whole situation? But for the good of the nation, for if for anything, for the good of the nation, and for security purpose, I think it is. it makes a lot of sense to ask Pantami to step aside. For having been indicted, having been linked with terrorist and terrorism act in form of meetings, in form of statements and the like. If you have also observed what has been happening in this country, you would have seen high level of impunity, high level of bravado on the side of these perpetrators of all these heinous acts. A lot of security officers have been killed. A lot of army Air Force, number officers have been killed. Then the question is this, what is the justice if somebody is pointed as being part of those or supporting, whether strategically or in terms of technical or in at operational level or even at governmental level, supporting every act of or any act of terrorism, what is the justification for keeping such a person? All right, hold on. Those Stop that have time. died right. in the course of this terrorism, do you think that they will be happy? All right, you, you've made really strong, you've made really strong points, uh, Mr. Foyetan. Kindly hold on. Uh, we have another security analyst, uh, Kabir Adabu, joining us. Um, I would like him to of, of, uh, continue from where you stopped. Kabir, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I want you to respond to uh, statements that have been made by Tony Foyetan, of course, our, our previous guest. The possibility of more um, of uh, the likes of Issa Pantami in the Nigerian government uh, of today. That's one. And then second also, this one is a big one. Do you think there's a way of finding out if actions were taken um, uh, in the last 10 years that follow with the exact agreements from that meeting that was he held in 2010? Do you think there's a way to link some of the violence that we've seen in the last 10 years across Nigeria with the agreements from that meeting? Um, th thank you very much. And I'm very happy that you used the word um, allegedly. <laughs> we are in a sane society um, that is guided by principles, rules, and laws. And um, I would like to backtrack a little bit to my co-discussant, Tony. He used some terms that I think we should be very mindful. Um, the media is an in influence platform and it has tremendous uh, you know, listenership, especially a station like yours. Now, when you use the word indicted, my conclusion would be that a competent court of jurisdiction has indicted the personality that you are referring to. So when my code is and says, um, Patami is indicted, uh, belonging to a cell or to have incited actions. Um, I would presume that he's got knowledge or information suggesting that a competent court of jurisdiction has indicted him. As far as I know, um, no com court of jurisdiction has, has even listened to this matter. A lot of what we're hearing is happening on the media. Now, having said that, um, I'm a professional and when this issue came up, I analyzed it and I tried to look at the bigger picture. Now, did Pantami say the things he is alleged to have said in 2010? Um, he hasn't released a statement yet, but several e statements that have come out, he has owned up to. Others um, have, uh, he's, he's denied. And incidentally, uh, even Khan has come out to reject some of them. An example is the alleged, his alleged link to the killing of the former governor of Kaduna State. Um, so that, 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 that's, that's one. Uh, in essence, what I'm trying to say is that the social media has also uh, taken advantage of this situation and there is a lot of fake news out there. So when we hear such things, it's as a professional, I would like to do, take a step back and do at least a corroboration and a verification and then we can reach conclusions. Now, having said that, my honest opinion on the whole matter, not just uh, whether there is a link between what he said to the development. Um, let's remember that Patami has been a public figure for quite a while. He was a DG NIDA before he was um, elevated or promoted to a cabinet minister. And since then, he has received um, and conducted a lot of things as a security professional 
I know that he has made um, tremendous uh, effort in providing platforms for tackling some of the security challenges that are affecting the country. Unfortunately, there are not things I can say here on, in public, but um, you are a journalist, I urge you to take your time, go to the ministry and make inquiries into some of the actions he has taken. That's one. Two, um, he has gone through the processes that um, every government uh, puts in place for his verification as a minister. Um, and through that processes, I expect that if some of these issues that have come up to the fore are uh, verifiable, or in my co-discussant language, how he has been indicted, uh, the, the issues would have come up through that process of verification. Now, the third thing that I think is absolutely important for me as an analyst, um, anyone who feels strongly about some of these things, instead of coming to the media and use what we indict, indicted, should actually do the two things that are available to us as citizens. Number one, sue him. Uh, under what law? We are, we are I, 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 alleging that he's a member of a terrorist organization. So sue him and present the facts to a competent court, court of jurisdiction. Let, let, let that court look into the matter. And then, of course, if he's indicted, then we all know what will happen. Number two, um, go to the parliament and ask any of the committees on ethics or whatever um, issue that we, we want to look into. It could be the committee on security or whatever. Uh, let them give, your, give them your, evidence, your evidences and present it to them so that they investigate him and come out with at least a position by the parliament upon which they can advise the executive arm of government. Now, in the absence of all of this, let's remember that the federal government has taken a position on this matter. And what worries me as a security analyst is the Pandora's box that we are opening. Um, there are two tectonic issues that would either make or mar Nigeria. Uh, these are centrifugal forces. Any student of political economy in Nigeria will tell you these two things have to be handled carefully. That is ethnicity and religion. Now, the uh, authors of this allegation behind Pantami are whipping up the religious sentiments. We already have a lot of centrifugal forces that are tearing at the seams of Nigeria. I do not think Nigeria can afford what I am seeing as the Pandora's box. So let me give you an example. Let's assume Pantami is sacked or removed. And then the, his supporters, and mind you, he has enormous supporters within um, the, at least the Muslim community. Then they, they start demanding that um, Christian um, officials who are active members of churches, including I think, the number two citizen in the country, should also resign, um, ma mainly because they have professed you know, to be part of that, that religious body. And of course, what, what is that religious body doing? It's proselytizing. But, so but, that uh, is the Pandora's Mr. box. Mr. Kabir Adamu. Imagine what would happen in that situation. Yeah, Christian Kabir Adamu, I, 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 I apologize for, for jumping in here. Situation. So for me, that is the bigger picture. Yeah, that, I, I understand. Uh, Kabir Adamu, I, I need, uh, because of time, I uh, would also like to bring in Tony Afoyetong here. But, um, but I, I, I get the picture you're painting, um, you know, and I, I like that you've also said that a thorough investigation should be carried out um, and nobody should be fired simply because, um, you know, a few people don't like his face. Um, but, you know, the, the things that have been presented as evidence against him, you know, it, it, don't you think it's great that the Nigerian government at least looks deeper into these things instead of just waving them off? Uh, do you think that they've done well enough in, a, in any way to assure Nigerians that these things may not hold you know, any water when they took their decision? I think they have done um, a lot. Whether they've done enough or not, I am not sure. Uh, what do I mean? Um, Pantami was nominated as a minister. And after his nomination, he was uh, presented before the National Assembly. And I know the processes uh, of um, verification at the National Assembly would include a background check by the various security organizations, um, name them, all the inter members of the inter intelligence communi community would do their own bit, uh, possibly other law enforcement agencies would do their own bit. So when you say whether the government has done an investigation, I think it, ha it has done that. And then um, I'm not a member of the government, but it's very likely that um, when these issues came up to, uh, they also did um, some levels of check. Like I said, there are laws guiding this thing. All so right. if um, we're suggesting that he's been in indicted, under what law? I'm not, I'm not even aware that anyone has gone to court with any of these uh, allegations against All right. All him. So right. is the government um, going to rely on this media? Uh, 
All right, Kabir Damu, uh, we're going to have to put you on pause there. Uh, I want to bring in Tony Ofoyetan with the time that we have left. If you can squeeze your thoughts into 45 seconds, I would really appreciate it. Mr. Ofoyetan, please respond to uh, Kabir Damu's uh, take. Oh, we seem to have lost him. I think we're going to have to just um, wrap up the uh, program for this evening here. Um, interesting perspective brought in by Kabir Adamo. I would like to say thank you for your time and for speaking with us and uh, all our viewers this evening. Really appreciate it. Same to Tony Foyeton. I apologize for the network issues that we had at some point. But thank you for your time and thank you for speaking with us. We would like to have an extended conversation about this, hopefully during the week. Uh, thanks once again. All right, thanks for staying with us. When we return after the short break, I'll be giving my take. Just before we go, who really is a national security threat to the Nigerian state? What determines national security threats? And what truly is Nigeria's stand concerning terror? These are the biggest questions on the minds of Nigerians today. Sometimes Nigerians wake up and realize that they don't truly know Nigeria and what it represents. A 10-year-old boy was sentenced in Kano for blasphemy uh, not uh, long ago, I think about a year ago. Could he maybe have also been seen to be young and naive? Or do those rules only apply to ministers? Will you leave your child in the care of a person who has made statements about his love for and love maybe and support of pedophiles in the past? Would you entrust the, your uh, child in that person's care a couple of years later? What truly is Nigeria and what does it stand for? That's my take. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this evening. We'll love to see you again sometime next week. Bye-bye.